Hello, hello, Pamela here. Welcome to another art journaling session. I, again, am going to use one of my faces out of my reference folder of faces. Um, she has this hand up at her face, and I think I'm going to leave that. At first, I thought, oh, I don't really want to do a hand, but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to kind of roll with it. Now, I'm a little... Um, I'm a little short on time, but I did want to get out here and create something. And so it's going to be interesting to see if I can stick with creating, knowing that I have an appointment coming up. <laughs> so we'll see. And this paper, yellow paper, is just kind of a, um, I don't know, I call it a trash paper, where I just kind of used my, I was cleaning my brayer off on it. I'm going to use some uh, washi tape, a napkin, a little polka dotted uh, tissue paper. Now, um, on the napkins, when you use a napkin, they actually come with layers. And you may know this trick, but I was taught a trick that you use two pieces of tape and it will help you separate your back layer from your front layer. On that particular napkin, the first layer came off. This napkin actually had three layers. So I was able to pull off the first layer really good, but if you take two pieces of tape and attach it to one of the corners, one on each side, and then really gently pull, you'll get those other tricky layers that don't want to come off. The reason why you want to separate the layers is if you add a napkin that has layers to your artwork, it's possible that they might separate in your artwork and you don't want them to. So I'm going to tear up this particular um, piece of napkin using my ruler. Um, it's so beautiful, you guys. I've had this napkin for a long time. I think it was gifted to me. Um, and it's a little longer, so I'm going to have to, um, you know, trim it down a little bit. Um, and then I think I'm going to put some butterflies in her hair. I mean, like, why not, right? So I will clean up the butterflies on the, on the napkins that are going to go into her hair, um, just so that there's not any rough edges. Now, today I am using um, a matte medium, which is different than the gel. It's a little bit more fluid. And the reason why I'm using that is because I'm using tissue paper and the little scrap paper that I have is a really thin kind of a copy paper. Um, so I, I really uh, don't need to use the gel medium and it's a new, it's new and I want to, <laughs> I want to try it out, right? So with the tissue paper, I don't really apply it to both sides um, because the tissue paper is really thin. When you apply any type of adhesive to the back of the tissue paper, it kind of like, I don't know, gets all bunchy. And then you go to try to lay it down on your your artwork or on your page and it just it just doesn't work. So I find with tissue paper just to attach it, you know, directly onto a surface that has adhesive. And I'm gonna put my piece of scrap paper up here. Again, this was just something that I had that I was just cleaning my brayer off of. And I thought, yeah, why, why not use it, right? I'm gonna put my girl off to the side here. Now, it's kind of funny, you know, the top of her head looks like it's been cut off. If you were gonna leave it like this, it would look a little funny, but I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put the butterflies up there by her head. And I really like this ideal of um, her biting on her fingers. It'll be interesting to see if I can not overwork those fingers. Um, this tissue paper I've just had laying around for a long time with the polka dots. I love it, but I wish the polka dots were a little closer together. Um, I notice when I put it down, I usually have to like lay it over on each other because of the polka dots. So I've trimmed up the outer edges of the butterfly. I really just wanted you to see the butterfly and not the background of the napkin. And I'm going to put two up here. At first I thought, oh, I'll do one, but I realized I had to get rid of that flat top on her head because it just looked really funny. So this looks wonderful. I need to let it dry um, a little bit. Um, I still um, have the washi tape that I want to get on here. Um, I don't know why I don't use the washi tape more often, you guys. I have a lot of it. Um, I just don't use it. I do find with my washi tape that I need to apply gel medium or some type of adhesive, matte medium, whatever, on my surface. And then I also apply a layer of that over it as well. I'm going to use strips of the yellow as well as the brown. She had brown in her shirt, so I tried to stick with some washi tape that was similar to the color palette that we have. 
Um, and then once all of the washi tape has been adhered here, um, I will go hit this with the heat gun. So my surface is now dry and I'm going to get ready to start painting here, but I wanted to share with you the colors that I'm going to be using. I have my um, unbleached titanium. I'm using a Naples yellow because it kind of matched the background. This is a transparent violet, ultramarine violet. I don't use it very often because it really is transparent. I have my um, azo green on there and then I also have a sepia and I realize I want to add a red and so I'm going to add some um, alizarin crimson here because it's just laying on my surface. And I'll apply these words that were part of the magazine image. I'll apply those later. So let's get started painting here. Um, I've sped the video up a little bit um, and I'm going to put a little bit of music on and I'll come back in and check in in just a minute. share with you by mixing the A's of green with that very translucent violet along with some of the sepia it made a really great olive green. This was a happy little surprise and it's making a really good dark shadow. And we feel like nothing's gonna change. It's so funny, you guys. I knew I was going to want to use some black. Always, always. So I've reached into some black gesso here and I'm going to mix that with some of the alizarin crimson because I really, um, when I use my black gesso, I, sometimes I'll use it straight, but lots of times I love either putting a blue or a red in there and alizarin crimson is kind of my go-to thing. Um, it really adds a different tone to the black and it's not so flat. So her hair i just love her hair it <laughs> cracks me up it's kind of got that um egyptian cut that she's got and here i'm using some of the lizard and crimson but i've mixed in a little bit of the sepia because i want there to be as if she does have a shirt but i, I didn't necessarily want it to be all black i'm going to work on defining her hand here a little bit more um that washi tape was kind of over her hand i can kind of see it in there and and i also felt that the hand was really thick so i've thinned that a little bit and i'm mixing some of that unbleached titanium with a little bit of white gesso working on some of the lights here on her face and i'm going to wind up i think adding a little swash here of the warrior paint that i love putting on my girls i'm going to add that across i'll i'll add a little um highlights here to her eyes as well 
um, just so that they stand out and of course that little highlight on her nose and her lip. Now this Naples yellow is um, really good match with my background paper so I'm just going to kind of dry brush some of this on and go right over that scrap paper that I have in the back. I'll go around the top of her head area as well up in the corner here with the butterflies um, just to block in my image a little bit. I'm going to use a white Posca to outline her hair where there's the darkest darks here. And then I'm going to come in with a black Posca and I will go around the butterflies a little bit. And then I'll put that little frame line that I like to put on these art journal pages. And I'm going to call her done, you guys. And I can't believe this. I have finished this in under 15 minutes. It's amazing what you can complete if you don't overwork it. Alrighty, guys, enjoy your day. Take care. And I hope you have time to do some art journaling. Bye.